There are many superlatives to describe Darwina's many contributions as a longtime National Park Service administrator, landscape architect, and advocate for women. But leave it to Penn State alumnus to characterize her as something of a rock star among students. <laughs> From her first job working on Lady Bird Johnson's beautification program in 1965, to her retirement in 2009, to her continuing service to others, Darwina has helped shape the profession. One nominator said, Darwina Neal is an icon and a legend in the profession of landscape architecture, both nationally and internationally. She has spent her adult life both designing and preserving great places for all to experience, and she spearheaded gender equity in our profession, where today, academic departments almost universally educate more females than male students. And Darwina has accomplished all of this as a proud and still very active Penn State alumna. It is a pleasure to present Darwina Neal with the Alumni Fellow Award. Wow, I never thought of myself as a rock star. <laughs> I don't think I am, actually. Um, but anyway, thank you, President Barron. I'm very honored, very honored to be here. When Dean Corner told me I'd been selected as an alumni fellow, I was so surprised that she said it was the only time she'd heard me speechless. <laughs> and tonight she told me to make sure I got the mic so everybody could hear me. <laughs> um, so I want to thank her and others and Joyce Hoffman and her staff who coordinated all the arrangements for me for this evening. I grew up on a dairy and poultry farm in Mansfield, Pennsylvania. And my parents said I could go wherever I wanted as long as they could afford it. And fortunately, I chose Penn State. So with their support plus scholarships, a bank loan, and working summers and holidays, I made it even though I had to go an extra year because I switched from horticulture to landscape architecture. Thank goodness. <laughs> they would have been my parents would have been proud to be here tonight, but they passed away several years ago. But my sisters and some of their families are here to support me tonight, including one sister who went here, and my niece's husband, an architect who graduated from here. Now, I have the dubious distinction of being the oldest fellow tonight, <laughs> as evinced by my infrastructure problems. Um, <laughs> so I've seen many changes. Mine was the first landscape architecture class with two women. My dorm roommate was the first woman in engineering science. My roommates in an apartment were the only woman in her architecture class and the first woman in architectural engineering. I was the third woman to work as a landscape architect for the National Park Service. I could have been the first working for the Forest Service, but I didn't really want to work in Harrisonburg, Virginia. <laughs> I spent my 44-year career in the National Capital Region and was fortunate to have good mentors who also supported my involvement with the American so Society of Landscape Architects, including as the first woman who was president. My education at Penn State was an excellent one provided good skills for my Park Service work, as well as for future graduates that I hired, two of whom who are here tonight, I thank them for coming, as well as a Park Service colleague and another friend who now teaches here. In the summer of 1963, a six-week landscape architecture department sponsored tour of 10 European countries provided my first taste for international travel which I later expanded on trips to meetings all over the world, and I made many friends in many countries. In closing, life is a tapestry woven of people and experiences, and throughout my life I've been very fortunate that I've worked with many talented and dedicated ones, friends and family, who have helped make my accomplishments possible and my tapestry a more beautiful one. I'm very fortunate and very grateful to everyone. Thank you 